Divine True Spirit Discussions. These are discussions with people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. Jesus talks to Dzo, a six-sphere Buddhist monk, through intermediary Anto Klobuka. This discussion was recorded on the 24th of June, 2014, in Wilsdale, Queensland, Australia. Welcome to the Divine Truth channel, the mediumship we're doing again today. This time I'm doing it again with Anto, so mm, welcome you. Anto. Thank you again. <laughs> and Anto is talking to a Chinese man who's come to talk with us, so I don't know about what yet. <laughs> His name's Zhao, so it'd be interesting and uh, it should be fun to have a chat with him. Hello. G'day. Thank you for inviting me here. It's my pleasure. Mm. It's just interesting being in a different surrounding. <laughs> <laughs> what surrounding are you used to? I'm used to my home mm -hmm. and I've not ventured very far from it. Mm -hmm. mm. And your home is where? In the sixth sphere. Yeah. In, with all my brothers and sisters. And how long have you been living there, Joel? For a very extensive period of time. Mm -hmm. I've not cared for keeping, time. Keeping track of time. That's correct. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Maybe for the sake of our listeners here on Earth, you might be able to give some context of the time, though? Just yes, I can do that. Yep. I lived on Earth in the third century before, yep. before Christ, yep. BCE, as they refer it to. Yep. Mm. And so you've been in the spirit world now for two and a bit thousand years, two and a half thousand years almost. Quite an extensive period, yes. Mm. And I've not ventured very far. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in the sixth dimension. I'm in the sixth sphere, yes. Mm. But I am where I desire to be. Mm -hmm. mm. And whilst we lived on Earth, it was a pretty trepidatious period, if you'd want to call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Much I don't suffering. even know what that word means. <laughs> there was a lot of suffering. It was very difficult to live. <clears throat> mm. Mm. It was violence and it was a hard period where people had to learn and we were assisting people to learn about how to become more moral in their stance. Yeah. Mm. 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 It was a very, very difficult period. Mm. And we lived in a, I lived in a regime and I would call it a regime. Mm -hmm. It was under rule by the dynasties as, as they were, and those dynasties carried on for very long periods of time. Mm -hmm. mm. I didn't care much for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were all about oppression, weren't they? Extreme oppression. Mm. And hence my desire to help myself and others yes. in what I partook, partake whilst I was on earth and what I continued to do when I had passed. Mm. Mm. So how did you find it when you first passed into the spirit world? Very difficult, in, in, in a sense. I sincerely believed in the practice that I had engaged in whilst I was on earth. Mm -hmm. And you are familiar with that practice, as we all are. But And what practice is that, again, for our listeners' sake? We'll oh yes, I, <laughs> I am forgetting. <laughs> there were some terms that you had spoken to me about before I arrived. Sure. Mm. And I understand that this is for others as well. Mm -hmm. mm. Could you repeat the question? Um, just what, it, it, how would you summarise the practices that you, mm. that you had? I was thinking about a lot of the things, memories were coming back to me mm -hmm. of my earth life. Mm. I was a Buddhist, mm. I was a monk and I did not have stature whilst I was on earth and I attained much greater levels when I had passed mm -hmm. and over time I'd gained that. So I was a practicing Buddhist and there are many different groups as you're aware and the religion in a way has grown in mm. many, many corners of the world. It has. Hmm, since that time. Mm. And we were, we were in China throughout that period that I was aware and I had traveled through China through various monasteries. Mm -hmm. mm. And we were assisting, um, as I, there were other people coming from other regions and Taoism was one of those Taoist groups and 
they excited me and they had a very keen interest in what we were learning and we were able to share with those brothers and sisters as well mm. during that period. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it was done through secrecy, as mm. you may understand. Mm. Um, we ventured across, they had to venture across different borders mm. and see us and seek us mm. at their own peril. Mm. And I cherished all these moments with these people. So my time that I spent on earth was under military rule, but we had our own freedom in a sense. We, our monasteries were protected and under guard in a way. Mm. 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 And again, for the sake of our <laughs> listeners, <laughs> um, perhaps you would like to talk about what, what, what would the, what's the reason why you wanted to talk today? Because mm. mm. as you point out, and most people probably who would be listening to this wouldn't know, and that is that you've spent most of your time now in the spirit world, and, and it's been many, well, it's been over thousands of years now since you've visited the earth. Yes. And so, you know, there must be fairly strong reason to come back and have a chat. <laughs> well, my interest is not in the earth itself. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that to be a selfish statement. Mm -hmm. More so, we have engaged with you in the spirit world in another form. In You had another form. Mm -hmm. And you have recently invited us to have a chance to speak with you in, in your physical presence. Mm. So it's taken us a while to accept this. <laughs> <laughs> so the invitation is not of recent yes. events, yes. as you were as you are aware. Yeah. And we have considered this and a few of few of us, us, our brothers, have all decided to come to talk to you. And we have a number of questions for you. Sure. And can I ask one question before you begin? Yes. Have you met Buddha in the spirit world? It is a, a difficult answer to provide. Mm. I've spent many endeavours in the spirit world, in the homes where like-minded people who are practising Buddhism are in a way seeking to attain what Buddha has achieved. Mm. And I've spent all my life doing so. And I am still unsure whether I have met this person, the enlightened being that mm. we have all so endeared. I have met people who claim that they were this very person, mm -hmm. but I do not trust in what they say. Mm. And in a way, you have also explained certain things to me, to some of my other brothers, that, you, that we have actually indeed met Buddha, and mm. we are troubled by this. Mm. In fact, that there may have been several Buddhas but the identity is not in the way that we understand it to be. Mm. It is trivial in nature <laughs> for one to understand without having the context of what occurs in the spirit world. Mm. And, and there are many things that need to be explained. And I do not feel a lot of this is being transmitted correctly mm. at this point in time. Mm -hmm. However, I have not met the enlightenment that I seek. Mm. And that is, that is what I am, in a way, asking to learn. Mm. And, mm. and none of the people that you have met who claim to be Buddha have, have, not, have, have met the enlightenment they seek either, have they? Neither, no, yes, mm. that is correct. Mm. We, they are very similar to ourselves. In mm. fact... The same. In, the same, and to a degree less so. Mm. And that, that is one of the reasons why I found it difficult to accept these individuals as who they say. And I'm seeking the true expression of what we have learned in life. And I understand, and you, you are full, fully familiar with our, our teachings mm -hmm. and the teachings of Buddhism, mm -hmm. that it is a principle of practice. Mm -hmm. And we are quite strong in our... You know, we are very, how would you say it? Not forceful, but there is 
fortitude in what we believe in. You're dedicated. We're extremely dedicated. Mm. And enlightenment, one of the foundations of the teachings relates to being of pra practicing this principle mm -hmm. to its nth degree. And I've done so. But I am, as you, I'm getting tired of this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm. Mm. And our religion talks about many things, concepts as well, that you have used, and you are aware of these. Mm. You have used the term the soul, mm -hmm. and we, we also refer to the soul. There are many things, and that's, that is one of our questions. What is a soul? Mm -hmm. Another question that we have, and what, hence the reason why you invited us to Earth, relates to what we believe in is this cycle of rebirth and feeling one's suffering in a way through the cycle of rebirthing and reliving and rebirthing. Mm. I have not, and this is very difficult. So this is the concept of reincarnation, if you like. Yes, That's but we have a slightly different concept of reincarnation of to course. most others. Yeah. In that we feel <clears throat> that we are aware of our presence if we were to reincarnate. Mm -hmm. And we speak of this as a cycle of rebirth. Mm -hmm. And the cycle only exists for, for us to learn as part of our practice various various things about ourselves, how to atone one's suffering, how to atone and achieve the enlightenment, as many have used the word in mm. the past, mm. true nirvana. Mm. Now, I have spent all my time in the spirit world and I have not yet learned how to achieve rebirth mm. in a so, way. So for 2,300 years you've yet to observe anybody who's truly been reincarnated from our religions yes yes and also yet to have done it yourself correct i have not done it myself mm. and it has taken a very long time there ha have been many others who have visited the earth and who practice in the teachings and disseminate this information to many others mm. but they haven't reincarnated they've overcloaked people on earth yes and it is a different form of rebirth mm -hmm. and i am pure in my heart in terms of the teachings mm -hmm. to me and this is a divergence. There are many divergences that has occurred over time. Mm -hmm. And it is a growing, it's a growing religion, as the term that is currently used on earth. Mm. To me, it's simply a practice. But it is, it has many arms and legs. Mm -hmm. And there are many... And differing opinions now. Extremely. Mm. There are so many individuals who visit our home, who attempt to explain many things. And I have... And what do you find about all this ph philosophizing? Do, do you find it quite tiring at times? Or I've been open to people and to different th theologies. Mm -hmm. Our religion requires us to do so. Of course. We do not judge one person simply because they have a different belief. And there is much wisdom in, in men. And mm -hmm. we believe that all men and women have a quality of God within themselves. Mm -hmm. that they are a true aspect of of this mm -hmm. so there must be certain truths and certain wisdoms that they have learnings within them that i may not have attained when so, you say must be um it's yet to be determined though isn't it for many of them like so i suppose the question i'm having uh, like the question that's very important and I, I think it's also very important for most people on earth to consider and that is what is the truth in comparison to what is the truth that people believe because they're very different as you know yes so you over the last in two and a two thousand three hundred years you've learnt many truths about the spirit world for example and you've also learnt many truths about the physical body and the physical existence that you didn't know when you were on earth but now you know for certain to be true and then there's other aspects, um, and this is where I'm talking about philosophy, where people have all these concepts and ideas that are all very, very different from each other, but none of them have been determined to be true. And that is correct. I would refer to them as theology. Mm. 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 So they're really theories that have yet to be put, uh, ha have yet to be put into practice because they're yet to be experienced by anybody. And this is the great thing that I've discovered since I'd passed that in a way I've not sought to 
seek myself to be reborn, mm -hmm. but rather I have pursued learning in a way to verify the theologies that I believe in. Yes. Hmm. And, I, and I suppose you could say in your observance over 2,300 years, you would have observed that many religious people from different religious faiths do the same thing. Yes. They, they, they arrive in the spirit world with a desire to attempt to approve their particular theology that they engaged in on earth. And often during that process, they have to drop certain things that they thought were true because they realize now that they're not true. And then they've also had to embrace certain principles that they didn't think were true because now they realize they are true and so forth. And as a result, many of the theologies have actually developed. In other words, they look very different from the theologies that they appear to be on earth. But, but in a lot of ways, they still have some very basic similar principles, uh, many of which are yet to be proven to be true. Correct. Yeah. Hmm. And, and, and it's very difficult to transmit this information back to Earth. Of course. As, as you say, if one has not, if one is simply focused on what they truly believe in, mm -hmm. they, in a way like I have, you are cl dismissed, you dismiss a lot of other information. Yes. And in, it's not, in a way, I do not choose to dismiss it for the purposes of dismissal. Yes. <laughs> but more so that I am focused on attaining the truth of that which I believe in. Yes, mm. yes. Now, um, the reason why I wanted to speak with you and I and, uh, have wanted to speak with you for some time is because um, I suppose you could say I have a different approach to yourself to obtaining truth. So it, it, it could be said perhaps, and, and correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, just, it could be said that the way in which you're approaching truth is that you've come up with a theology, a, an idea or concept, which you are then experimenting with through different practices in order to determine whether that particular concept or, is true or not. There is a belief in you that it is true, mm. but it's yet to be established firmly correct. because it is yet to be proven logically or through your own experience. Yes, and you have stated to me directly mm -hmm. that you will be able to prove certain things. Through your own experience. Through, and which will allow me to have the experience to attain this information. Correct. And that is drawing me to you. Yes. Mm. Yep. And in a way, it has drawn me to be able to speak with you in the spirit world. And if you recall our conversations, not completely at this point, but mm. yeah. it has been, you have stated to us, it has been very difficult for you to approach us in a way that we have not been open to, mm. to receive you, to speak to you. Yes. Mm. Yes. And there is. So, so what, if you think about the reasons why that has been the case, what, what has been the primary reasons why there hasn't been that openness? Mm. There have been a number of things that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. One of those things related to our adherence to pomp and ceremony, as you called it. <laughs> yes. And we endeared others who in a way worshipped us. Mm -hmm. And that has precluded others from being able to communicate with us. We have pushed them away. Yes. And, and that, that has been a very difficult thing to, to receive and to admit that that's been the case yes yes i have not necessarily been concerned with others in 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 assisting them in a way mm -hmm. i've been pursuing things for myself yes and i have att attained a, a a position how it as you would say in our in our home yes and those who would speak with us would also require to develop themselves in a certain way to be able to be in a position to speak to ourselves. Yes. So, so there are many, shall we call them, man-made laws and regulations that govern the way in which you interact with other people. Correct. And these things have been, in a, in a similar way, have been on earth as well. Of course. 
And then you also see, can't you, that there are many other religious faiths who also engage in different practices, but it's similar in a way that they have what you would call ceremony mm. that they engage in that, that determines who is a person who's worth listening to and who's a person who has to do all the work and not listen, be not listened to. <laughs> yes. And not many people visit other people's homes. No. Of the religious kind that we speak of. Because every one of them are trying to find the, I suppose you could say, the perfection inside of their own religious faith. Yes. And no one is willing to, to remove or disbelieve in one's theology. Of course, because there, there are certain fears that some have associated with that. But there are other times it's because there's a huge level of investment, isn't there, of time, which has caused a person to go down a certain path. So if you've been going down a certain path for thousands of years, then obviously there's a large investment in time mm. in that particular path or that particular theology. Mm. Mm. And in a way, you approached me by surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's normally the case. <laughs> yes. And stature and form did not matter to you. No. And in a way, I was quite attracted to, to this opportunity that arose. Mm. And I am, I am of a higher ranking person mm -hmm. at, that, at that time. I am not at this point in time, and I do not understand that. <laughs> <laughs> However... It did not concern me. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, perhaps uh, if we can start to, by answering some of your questions firstly, mm. and then as I promised, there's some experiences that you can engage if you desire to, which will help prove whether or not what I'm talking about is correct or not. Mm. Does that make sense? So, so perhaps first if we engage some of those questions, and one of the first questions that you asked was about the soul. Yes. And what it is. And you also, in reference to that, you have spoken of that one do not ne does not need to attain all this for themselves in the form of one does not have to... One can experience things for themselves, but one does not have to resolve all issues for themselves through a intrinsic and enclosed practice. Correct, mm. yes. And in fact, it goes deeper than that, actually. People do not have to experiment with everything. There's, there are certain experiments which I would classify as being more powerful than others. Mm. And um, mostly because they are experiments that God designed rather than human design. And when I talk about God, I'm now talking about an entity of God. I know there are two Buddhist th thoughts on the entity of God. One is that there is no such thing as an entity of God um, and that we are all fragments of God, if you like. And then the mm. other thought is that there is an entity of God and both of these come from Buddhist theology. And I just wondered which particular theology you had. I'm from the Mahayama groups mm -hmm. and we we believe in a lot of the truths, so they do. They are intertwined. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that there are deities mm -hmm. and that one is able to receive a form of divinity in, in one's practice and in one's life. Yes. I feel that one, through discipline and through continual growth, can attain enlightenment. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you don't sort of conceive that there is a being, if you like, an entity. No, I do not conceive of, of God. That. That's mm. right. And these are the very, all our questions are intertwined in a way. Of course, of mm. course. And you stated to me that we would not be discussing the, the depths of my religion, but more when you had invited us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that uh, for us to be slightly more open. Hmm. Well, as you consider. know, I've discussed the depth of your religious faith with many people in the past. Yes. And um, it has been ignored. And we are sorry for that. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Um, the, the reason why I find uh, such discussions sometimes a little fruitless is because we can, th we can uh, theorize about many things and philosophize about many things, but that doesn't establish a fact. 
And as you know, the establishments of facts, uh, the establishment of fact is the most important thing. Mm. So my focus of attention is on the establishment of fact mm. and how to establish fact. Now, the methods that you've been using to establish fact has been all regarding use of experimentation. Mm. So in other words, you've been focused on experimenting in order to establish a fact. Yes, and let's not forget what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. We are both talking about love, growth in one's being, in attaining love. True, but um, I'm going to speak of something else other than that. So let's, uh, well, I'm still speaking of love, but it's not the love that is developed internally. So, so let me first, perhaps the best thing to do is to, to start at the beginning of a different theology, mm. if you like, <laughs> okay. and then how to experiment with whether this is true or not. So, so the different theology I'd like to put to you is that rather than there being no God or no entity of God, that there actually is an entity called God. Mm. Right? Now, of course, God's the name we give that entity, but let's call it the creator or a person who's been responsible for the, not only the creation of the universe, but also for the creation of the laws that govern the universe. Okay. And as you know, there are many millions of laws that govern the universe yes. in all different hierarchical form. Mm. So, so we know that there are all these laws that govern the universe. And what you're attempting to do with your own faith is to utilize those laws in a manner that allows you to reach the state that you believe can be reached called enlightenment. Correct. Which, which has been referred to in the past historically by some as nirvana or paradise or other conditions. Hmm. But we've had to modify of course. some of our beliefs of in course. order to, to learn how to maneuver through these laws. Of course, because you've learnt a new law and in the process of learning the new law, you found that your own understanding was false and so you had to modify your understanding to suit the law that you'd newly discovered. Hmm. But these laws have not negated what we truly believe in, in the core foundations. I understand that, hmm. yes. So you've had to modify your theology based on the laws you've discovered, but, but the underlying core principles of your theology have not been disproven or proven to you at this point. Yes. That would probably be a good summary of that, wouldn't it? Yes. Okay, so, so what I would like to present to you is a, a different theology, if you like, for a, for a moment, just, just as a discussion, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about how you might establish experimentation to actually determine whether that theology may be true or not. The theology is quite simple uh, in that it's and quite easy to understand. So the, the theology is this, that humankind has been created rather than has been self-developed, and that humankind has inbuilt within them the potential of developing love, as you know. Mm -hmm. And that this love comes from within them, and the power of this love will depend on the power of its desire to be expressed. So that's one type of love. And then there is the type of love that comes from outside of the human soul. And I'm not saying coming from another human, but rather from the entity of God that can enter the human and transform the human. And is this what Buddha has received? Well, no, Buddha has not received that at this point. And I can discuss with you why as we go along through this discussion. But let's firstly talk about whether it's true or not, because it is pointless to talk about something, I feel, unless it can be established as a truth. And there are religions that speak of this. Of course, there are religions that speak of it. There are some of those religions that exist in the sixth sphere, as you know. Yes. But I put to you that they are just as clueless about it as, it, as the people who don't speak of it. Well, I would <laughs> agree with you. <laughs> exactly. However, there are people who, are, who have gone beyond the sixth sphere of the spirit world, as you know. There have been people who I've been close to mm -hmm. who have... Who have left the sixth left, sphere. Not necessarily in the sixth sphere, but more earlier in my 
Yes. My progression. So when you're in the third sphere and in the fifth sphere. Correct. Yep. Less so in our current homes. Yes. Mm. And then these people, um, when they left you, many of them have not returned since. They have not returned and I have not asked for them and I have not visited where they are. Yes. Mm. Have you ever attempted to visit where they are? No, I've not sought their company. Would you like to just ask one of them to come to you now? Yes, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is here. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when he left your company, when he was with you last? Yes. What he sphere were you in at the time? He was a young boy mm -hmm. when I had met him. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to take him and teach him mm -hmm. the things that I have learned. Mm -hmm. But he was resistive to such teachings. He's quite rebellious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's what I like to talk to him. <laughs> yes. Mm. And he so reminded me of myself <laughs> when you were younger. Yes. And I wanted to teach him not discipline in a way that mm -hmm. most people understand discipline to be. But discipline to practice. Yes. Because mm. mm. I saw great fortitude in this individual. That's right. That's right. But let's call it strength of will, shall we? Yes. He was very... Well, hence why I call him rebellious. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> He's still of the same form. He has not... Mm. In a way, he's, he feels different to me. He does. So when was, when was, what was the sphere where you last met him? Oh, hmm. I was in the first sphere. Yes. And, and he met you, he was in the, what sphere was he in at the time? He was passing and he... he so he just passed from he Earth. He just passed from Earth. Yep. And, and how many years ago was this? This was a very long time. Mm. Mm. He's not too, he would only be at least 50 years younger than I mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Okay, maybe, so you last saw him in the first sphere. Yes. And, um, and I don't know why I would choose him. Oh, of course, yes. Interesting, isn't it? Mm. But it takes us to the very beginning. Yeah, it does. And perhaps it's partly because of his nature. Yes. He's very playful. <laughs> yes. But I do not feel this rebellious side to him. No. That seems to have gone. Yes. In a way, he demonstrates something that you have mm -hmm. and that drew me to you as well. Mm. What I would like to do now is just engage in a little experiment. And this experiment is not intended to make you feel uncomfortable at all, but rather just to demonstrate some truths to you, if that's okay with you. Yes. But you have not answered where this individual has been. Well, I think he can answer that shortly, but we'll okay. just go through yes. a few experiments first. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I am being rebellious myself. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> I understand there's so many questions that you will have. In fact, what will happen is that through every experiment, there will probably be more questions, but... Yes, for your viewers, perspective. Yes. There are other brothers here who are also asking at the same time. Of course. So I'm spending some time with them at the same time as I'm talking to you. Of course. And I'm attempting to relay their messages. Yes. Mm. And and many people on earth don't know that you're capable of, you know, relating things very rapidly and f yes. and quickly, so therefore you can easily maintain our conversation while at the same time yes, um having these other discussions. Correct. So, um, so let's firstly engage in this experiment. Mm -hmm. Now, as you, as you are aware, you are, have a fair degree of personal power now. Yes. And you've learnt to exercise this power through your um, exercise of your will. Yes. And this power has enables you to live in the sixth dimension of the spirit world or the sixth sphere of the spirit world. To do many things. Yeah. Mm. And if to I choose to do so. Yeah, to create or to do other things that you would like to do. Mm. Disseminate <coughs> information quite rapidly. Yes, mm. yes, and along with many other capabilities that you never had on Earth. Mm. And what I would like to do, though, for a moment is just to um, ask you to, to... You know that power is demonstrated by light. 
the light that comes out of your form. Yes. What I would like for you to do is to is to allow yourself to be yourself with the actual light coming out of your form. Now, most people who are listening to us won't understand what that means, but um, it means to that express you express my love in the way that you'll be able to express yeah. your love in the full manner that you currently have. And what I'm asking you to do now is, to, is, and particularly for the ones that are with you, is to measure that brightness that comes as an expression of your love. They have done so. Yeah, so they've measured that brightness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what we'd like to do is ask your friend, what is his name? I don't know if Anto will be able to repeat that name. <laughs> we shall call him Ming. Ming. Mm. So let's, uh, let's call your friend Ming. And... His, what we're going to do is ask him now to express the power of his love and you'll measure, be able to measure that as a brightness. Now, he will need to do it to a point where you will probably have to ask him to stop, but, but, um, and I'm sure he will stop when, when you can't bear it anymore, but at least you'll be able to measure the power of his brightness. So let's do that. I am a resilient person, but I must say, he must stop. Yeah. Um, several of our brothers have left. Why have they left? They feel quite confronted yes. by his presence yeah. and what has come to them. Yeah. They feel much discomfort, yes. and so do I. Yeah, I'd encourage you to stay, and I'd encourage those ones that have left to come back if they can, because he, he can go back to his normal condition. Well, what he's demonstrating to you is not actually his normal condition, but rather a toned down condition so that you can bear his company. I'm, I'm very curious what just transpired. Mm -hmm. And so are they. They have returned. Yes. Now, this was an experiment designed to help you see how much love this man had. You remember? But it did not take much effort on his behalf. Not at all. See, when you summon the effort to love, it is an effort, isn't it? There is a there is an expression of your will that says yes, something. Yes, it is a is an exercise of our true being, mm. a true expression in a way of our practice. Yeah. But he did not do this. No, he didn't do a practice, did he? No, he simply he simply smiled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there was all this power and brightness that came out him out out of him as a result. Yes. Hmm. Okay, now the third experiment is I'll do the same. Yes, I will ask you as well. <laughs> you want me to stop too? <laughs> yes, you need to stop. Mm. You can see that the feeling is very much the same as the feeling coming from... It's the same feeling, mm. even though things are slightly different yes. in their expression. Yes. You have done, done this to me. To a degree. Yeah. I remember when you came to me. Yes. You were much brighter than mm -hmm. when we conversed. Mm -hmm. And you said I will tone down myself as well. Yeah. But, I, but your words were of love. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... And this, I feel the same thing from you. Not much has changed in a way. Yeah. So if, if we go through this comparison now, so you've been able to now measure the love that you've had for your brothers and sisters, right? Yes. And then the love that, that Ming has for his brothers and sisters, yourselves. Yes, he has much love for us. Mm -hmm. And judging by the brightness, and as you know, uh, after, you, after you've gone through quite a number of the spheres of the spirit world, you know that the brightness of a person's spirit body is directly proportional to the amount of love that they have in them. Yes, and others may not understand this light, but there are many things that come with it. Yes, there's many other emotions that come with there it. There are many emotions. Yes. In a way, it provides a lightness to your heart. Yeah, but if you're, um, shall we say, not used to it, it can also cause some tears to well up, can't it? And yes, and it, that's what it does for me. Mm. Mm. It warms me at the same time as yeah. it 
as causing some discomfort. It causes much discomfort. Mm. But it's sort of not a bad discomfort. It's a, a discomfort based upon a it's like almost an unworthy discomfort, isn't it? It is. Mm. And in a way, I, it is very strange. I, would, I seek this. I would like this. Mm -hmm. But I'm very uncomfortable with it. <laughs> yes. So how would I be able to... And I've asked myself, why haven't I? What have I missed within my mm. exercises that precludes mm. me from having this? Exactly. So that's the real question, isn't it? Mm. Now, there is something inside... With, something with Ming's processes, obviously, or you could call him his practices, shall we call it? So the same, same, to, to use the same terminology as yourself. Yes, he did not... He smiles a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. He's very expressive yeah. in his nature, yeah. much more than we're, as I remember him. Yeah. When he did the, the thing with the light, he also changed slightly in his form. Yes. Hmm. And you notice he was much larger than it's what very, you thought. Very large. And he has wisdom that I do not know of. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that it, it become, you become aware, don't you, through this process that there's a lot of wisdom, knowledge, love, truth, and other things that are available to him that are obviously not available to yourself. He says there are qualities that he is, that he, that is him. Yes. That he does not have to, in a way, develop. He doesn't have to manufacture them. No. They are a part of his nature. It's true, his true nature. Yes. And his true nature is not the boy that I remember. No. He prefers another nature and he prefers to dwell also in his own home. Yes. And where is his home? In a place I do not know, that we do not understand. What sphere is it in? Hmm. He says he is in the 13th. Yes. He is, he has gone beyond what we believe in the six states of man. Correct. And he's... He's not making fun of us or ridiculing us in no, any way. No. And most people need to understand this. Yes. So he's not trying to denigrate you or pull you down. He's just stating a fact. Yes. And it comes with love. Yeah. I just don't know why I've all of a sudden developed tears for this. <laughs> That's but okay. You're allowed to have tears. Yeah? He said that he discovered another person. Mm. At the same time, I was attempting to teach him, embrace him. Mm -hmm. And what did that person tell him? He said it was strange. I could, he could see this person, and yet I could not. Right. When I was on earth, when I had passed. Yes. And I had been in the first sphere for a while. Yes. And why couldn't you see him? I do not know. Can you ask Ming why? Because Ming knows the answer. Ming was much more open in his own nature yes in love he had much more love than i had yes and that is strange i do not understand what he means by that and he he stated through my own choices i do not wish to see others around me yes. who were also around me that he could see yes but there was this person for him yes and this person drew him he reflected, if I could not see these individuals, he distrusted me in a way. Yes, because and he could see somebody that you could not see hmm. at the time. So you were in the first fear. He was in the first fear when he first passed over. But when you got together, you, he, he could see around you people whom you could not see. Yes, and he could see there were others there attempting to connect with me, yes. to talk to me that I was not aware. Yes. And and that you were almost ignoring. I was ignoring, yes. yes. So I said, why would I follow this person if you're ignoring what I feel that is available to myself? Correct. And he chose to go with, with this other individual. With the other individual. Mm. Mm. And he's glad that he had done so. Of course he is, yes. Because he has learned much. Yeah. More. Mm. It is sad. I do not know why I feel sad about this. 
Well, um, there a child could learn something that I... That you were blocked to learning yourself. Well, there's probably a few things there, isn't there? There's not only that, there's also the issue that many, many years ago when he made that transition, that if you had been able to listen to him, you might have made the same transition. Yes. And so there's a sort of, this, there's the feeling of lost time. Does it make sense? But I think we're getting a little way late from my experiments. Yes, we are. <laughs> so let's, let's go back to that experiment and look at what we've learned from that experiment. Mm. So what do you feel we've learned from that experiment? That there are other things that I have not been observant of. Yes. That one can learn things. And that the love that's capable of coming out of an individual is much greater than what I have attained for than myself. Than what you have attained for yourself. Yes. And that they have a love that is expressive in a way that I un am unable to. Yes. That my level of expression doesn't allow. Yeah, it does not create this. Yes. Yes. And my level of love causes me pain. <laughs> mm. Whereas it doesn't seem to cause them pain. It doesn't cause me pain. And when I feel it for you, it doesn't cause me pain, although it does it a little, mm. not, not as much as me, not at all, does it? Mm. But there is a thread of love that they, we all commonly share. There is a thread of love, but it's a different form of love. It's a different form of love, yes. yes. It still loves. Yes, so, so the question then becomes, um, what is the form of love? Hmm. So yes, what have you obtained? What so, have... so we're basically suggesting there's two different forms of love, aren't we? There's one form of love that you have obtained through the development of your practices over 2,300 years. And then there's the form of love that Ming's obtained, which has raised him to a place that is seven dimensions removed from your own place. Yes. Now, he has referred to being a development greater than what we can attain ourselves. Yes. And greater than even theoretically you ever thought was obtainable. Including what Buddha himself Correct. would have obtained. Correct. And it is a different form of enlightenment. And this is what I need to explain. So let's explain some of the basics of regarding these particular principles. Firstly, the type of enlightenment that you're seeking is a type of enlightenment of what I would call perfection of a person's natural love. In other words, it's a love that comes from out from inside of yourself and it's given to the, to those outside of yourself and also to yourself. But there is a limit to your development of it. And that limit is the sixth dimension. And that love was not originally within us. We still had to develop that for ourselves. Yes, the potential of it is within you. Mm -hmm. And the potential of the development is within you to the point of becoming the perfect natural man, if you like. So that love, as we were developing it, would you say that was coming to us? Or no, was it something... something through the learning of truth that you came to embrace and therefore develop within yourself. And that correlates more with how I feel. Correct. Correct. Now, Ming has received a different kind of love. He's, yes. he's done that, he's done what you've done, but he's done something far more important than that and far more powerful for him. Than he that. says that it's intertwined in a way. It is intertwined and particularly intertwined until you reach the seventh dimension or the seventh sphere of the spirit world. But the transition from the seventh to the eighth dimension of the spirit world or the eighth sphere is not possible without you receiving this other form of love. See, I have not seen a seventh dimension. No. You've yet to enter a seventh dimension because it's impossible for you to enter such a dimension at this point. Hmm. And it, it, as you rightfully state, I'm unaware of its existence. Correct. And many people in the sixth dimension or the sixth sphere are unaware of its, of yes. its existence. A lot of other religious many groups have not seen this as well. Correct. Many of you have heard rumours of its existence. We have. But you've ignored those rumours generally. Mm, that is a very strong word. Mm. Ignored. Mm. Is there any other word I can use? Mm, but it alludes to our choice not to. Correct. It is a choice not to. You see, there's there's been plenty of suggestion, if you like, or suggestion and and innuendo, almost you could call it, in the sixth dimension, that the seventh dimension does exist. But many people don't believe it exists, even though they've heard rumours of its existence. 
Hmm. I feel uncomfortable with this. That's okay. <laughs> Mm. Oh, you'll you find, can feel this. Yes, you, you'll find that I use very definite statements for, for the reason that most of the time they are truthful in the sense that when I say most of the time, they're, I feel always truthful statements. You see, we can choose to ignore things because it doesn't suit our belief system. Yes, and, and that is what has attracted me to you, mm. the unabatement to your, to your position. Yeah. Mm. And it's not in a you know, a, a firm, influential, controlling way. No. But there is certainty, surety in what you say. Correct. Now, surety only really, as you know from your own experience, comes by personal experience, doesn't it? Yes. You can't be sure unless you've personally experienced something. Hmm. And now Ming's sure, isn't he? Ming's very sure. <laughs> He's sure that there's a 13th sphere and a 12th sphere and an 11th sphere and a 10th sphere and a 9th sphere and an 8th sphere and a 7th sphere. He speaks of it. He demonstrates that. Correct. But I do not. So why is he sure? Because he has experienced these things. Because he's been there. Hmm. So he knows they exist. I'm not an Ill illogical person. Yeah, I know. I... <laughs> hmm. So what, what I, the reason why I point these things out to you is there's a purpose behind this, right? The purpose is, firstly, with the first experiment we engaged in was the, the, the showing of the light that comes from Ming compared to the showing of the light that comes from yourself. And you could see that the light is different and therefore much greater. It in is a Ming. different energetic form. Yes. Mm. And you could tell, therefore, that Ming obviously has more love because you know that something to do with light is always to do with love, right? Yes. So there's some more love in his soul. And he didn't have an effort to express it. He just expressed it. He just, as if it was a part of his nature. He said he had to allow himself to just, just be, be himself. Be himself, yes. Mm. And at the moment, he can't, he's got to tone himself down. Yes, he's exercising his will in the reverse. Yes, he's... he's which is different to what we are doing. Yes, he's restraining himself. Whereas we're... We're straining ourselves. <laughs> You're straining yourself and he's restraining himself. Yes. And even though he's restraining himself, he still has a greater brightness and therefore a greater amount of love in him than what you have. Hmm. And he says he does this, does this for love. Correct. To, he, our, to ourselves. Because he knows that it makes you uncomfortable if he, he, if he is himself. Okay. And he doesn't like to make you uncomfortable. No. No. And this is why I asked it be an experiment. Does it make sense? Yes. So now that we've done this experiment, what we see is that there is this love that comes from within you. And, well, and remember in the thread of the conversation that I've just been talking about, this is the love that is in the perfect natural man. So what you have within yourself right now is the development of what I would classify the highest possible development that you can develop yourself to be. Hmm. Could you speak of this in greater depth? So yes, the, certainly. So this is what I call the natural love that exists within you. And you have developed it to the state that you, that you have developed it now, which is to the state of perfection. And all my endeavours in the last several hundred years mm -hmm. has not achieved anything beyond this state. Beyond this state. Correct. And it doesn't matter how many practices you've engaged in to try to improve this state, it is actually physically impossible to, to, to improve this state yourself. So you do understand this. Mm -hmm. Now there is another feeling that is commencing mm -hmm. as part of this. Mm -hmm. And this is very unfamiliar to me mm -hmm. and is disconcerting. When you achieve the state of love that we are familiar with. The state you've now currently achieved. Correct. It feels that there is an end to it, to a degree. Correct. Because there is an end to it. And I feel I want, I want more. I understand. Yeah. And I've never... There's a I, growing feeling inside of you that there must be something more. Yes. I've never imagined that love would have a limit. Correct. 
And that saddens me. Mm. But the love that comes, that, that is able to be self-developed has a limit. This is what I'm suggesting to you. There are two different forms of love. Remember I suggested that at the yes. beginning. And I said there is this one form of love which you have developed to the perfect extent and that's as far as you are going to be able to develop it. So from your experience mm -hmm. and from Ming's, there is nothing more that we could do to develop this love. No, you can engage any practice you, in, you, in, you investigate or that you even create, you, that you imagine. It doesn't matter how many practices you create or imagine, there is going to be no further progress beyond your current point unless you understand this second form of love. And in a way, I understand what you're speaking of, not about the second love, mm -hmm. but about the attainment of this position that we're currently in. Yes. And this is the time that you had availed yourself to us. Correct. So remember when we first met, mm. I was conscious of the fact that you were feeling disconcerted. Yes. And, and I was asking several questions of myself. You were. And I asked some questions from my fellow friends. Yes to their disconcern and <laughs> disapproval. Yes, mm. because you see, to ask, to begin asking many of these questions, we've got to have the, presum or the assumption that actually there must be something wrong. Because it, no matter how many practices we're engaging, there is no further development. And it's taken me a very long to admit that because mm. others have been reliant upon me to achieve the next step. Yes. And so they're wanting for you to find the next step. Yes. Which means now there's sort of almost a pressure on you, isn't there, to find the next step? There is immense pressure. Yes. But no matter what practice you've attempted to engage, no matter what new form of techniques that you've attempted to engage, you've not been able to go beyond your current state. You know, I've been fearful of what do I do next? Mm. Because <clears throat> in a way, this will dismantle our entire foundation. Yes, possibly. Mm. And it is a possibility. Mm. Which is, uh, um, unfortunately, uh, uh, for, for some, it's going to be a fearsome possibility. <laughs> yes, we yeah. are all in fear of this. Mm. And hence... Which is interesting in itself, isn't it? When you would have thought that maybe all of your fears had gone. Yes, now... Yeah. Now, I have grappled with this concept. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You have slid this to us in the past quite mm. eloquently. <laughs> I must laugh. Mm. You have asked, asked the very question, if you attained this stuff, space, state of love, would fear be present? Correct. And what do you think, logically? Is and logically, answer? I could not argue with you. <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was annoyed. Mm. And then you asked the question again. <laughs> mm. Mm. Persistent. <laughs> you are very persistent. <laughs> but this is the directness that allowed me to question many things. Sure. It allowed me to question things to the discomfort of all my brothers and yes. sisters. Yeah. And it is correct. I have always presumed that all the suffering, all all my practices had resolved, had, you know... Resolved any fear that existed. Resolved all these feelings mm. that I had previously had. Mm. But obviously that's not the case either. No. And then these other... These feelings, they, in a way, they surprise you. Mm. They surprise you to an, ex to an extent that one starts to feel things despite all the will that we implement and on a daily basis, mm. on a minute basis. Because mm. days do not, are not relevant for us, as you are aware. Yeah. So can, can you see that you've spent an effort trying to, shall we say, remove your fears and grow in love, which has been the primary purpose. Once you knew that was the purpose, that's what you've been attempting to engage through practice. Mm. And in the end, it hasn't removed all the fears. No. And neither has it allowed you to grow in love to the extent that Ming has. No. And 
So we then must assume that there, there must be something more that Ming knows about that you are yet to have discovered. And that is an experiment I've not willed myself to discover. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's an experiment that you've tried almost to run away from, if you think about it. Yes, it has crept up on me. Yeah. And I am wondering how this was able to occur, given everything that I've been doing. Well, again, this is an expression of your will. You see, when you exercise your will in a direction where you deny certain truths to yourself, and then, of course, as you know, you won't be able to see the truth that other people may see. Mm. So Ming, when he was young and he, and he first passed, he could see the spirits around you that you could not see. So he was aware of more truth than you were aware of at the time. Yes, and you spoke of to us that there were others in, in the sphere below us mm -hmm. who, who were practicing what we were teaching them, mm -hmm. who were very astute students. Mm -hmm. And in a way, they disappeared as well. Mm. So a certain number of them have, and that has also caused us slight fear. Mm. And the question has been, where did they go to? And it's quite obvious now, if you think about Ming, that they must have gone to a dimension or sphere that's above the sixth sphere yes. that you have not believed existed, but obviously does exist. And I wanted to speak of them, but I had somehow thought of Ming. Yeah. So, yes, now there are many... There are many questions within all these. Of course, let's, this let's just proceed on about the question though, the biggest question, and this is, what is the form of love that Ming has received? Hmm. And what have the others have received as well? That the others must have received and developed. And what drove them to seek this above what they currently, what they were developing for themselves? Correct. Hmm. So these are good questions, aren't they? Yes, they were very, very astute questions. Mm. And of course I feel that Ming is very well placed to answer many of those questions. Mm. Given the he fact. did not invite us here. No. And in a way, he stated, he's confirmed a statement, and you stated that you were able to express this love through rebirth, post-rebirth, something that we have been intrigued about as well. Mm. So, so, so there is this issue, isn't there, of what is the truth about rebirth or reincarnation as the people on earth know it to be? Mm. And, and what is the truth about growth in the spirit world, about growth in love, about going from the sixth dimension of the spirit world to dimensions higher than the sixth? Yeah, and whether this is a necessary process in order to receive this other love. Yes. Now let's look at, let's now ask the question of Ming, given the fact that he obviously exists in a sphere that's higher than your own. Um, did he have to rebirth or get reincarnated in order to get to that sphere? Not only did he not seek to rebirth, mm -hmm. he did not receive this love that he eloquently shows us mm -hmm. through seeking to do rebirth. Correct. But he was reborn in another way. Correct. He was born again. Mm. So he speaks of two separate things. Mm -hmm. What you call rebirth, you've been referring to as rebirth onto the earth. Yes. In a he... physical form. And what he calls being born again is not born in a physical form, but rather being transformed. So he, he desired for that to occur. Correct. He yearned for it. He yearned for it to occur. But, but he currently does not yearn to be rebirthed. No, not, not reborn on earth. Not reborn on earth at no. this point in time. Correct. Mm. And, and who knows, there might be never, never a point in time where he feels like he wishes to do that. Mm. But he is still being able to grow to the sixth dimension of the spirit, uh, to beyond the sixth dimension of the spirit world. Yes. So it's obvious from that discussion that rebirthing back on earth is not necessary in order to grow in love. Mm, that puts into question a large degree of our theology. Correct. To a large extent. 
Yes, I know. It is a, it is a pillar of our foundation. Mm. Mm. And then the other question has yet to be answered, and that is, <coughs> where did Ming get this love from? Yes. Because this love cannot be developed by the person developing their own love. So, so where did he get the love from? Where does he say he got it from? Hmm. He says it is, it is part of divinity. Hmm. And although, although <laughs> I, it's very hard for me to say the words, although I do not like the term. Mm -hmm. Mm. Why don't you like the term? I do not acknowledge one's existence, the existence of this creator. Mm. Why is that? In a, in a, in this temperate form, as a being. So you find it very difficult to conceive that the creator would be a being, or even that there would be a creator. More so that it is a being, mm -hmm. as I. We have all felt that we are an aspect of God, God, mm. and that we have, in a way, in a simplest form, that this is a, a playground, a platform for us to, to grow. So you've all believed yourselves to be aspects of God. Yes, true aspects. That eventually would disappear, if you like, into God. Mm. And we, we're not concerned with the term, because there are so many other beliefs about the, of the word and yeah. neither, none of these groups and beliefs truly attest to the word. So Ming is saying to you that he's the reason why, only reason why in fact, he's been able to progress beyond the sixth sphere of the spirit world is because he's received love from outside of himself that comes from a being that he sees as God. That he truly likes to call God. Mm -hmm. It gives him great pleasure mm. Mm. to be able to identify with this person. Mm. And he's saying to you that without love coming from God, from this, you could think of him as our parent, because he is our creator and therefore our parent, without this love coming into him, he would never have been able to be transformed into the being that he currently is. Yes, he has stated that. Mm. And he shows, shows elements of that. Mm -hmm. mm. He said, he's an expression of that love. Mm. But in a way, he shows us that he has obtained that, but we cannot obtain that love through him. No. And so is it a necessity that he must be obtained through one's will? It can only be obtained through one's will, but it can only be obtained by exercising one's will to connect with that God. You see, there's two, as I've been explaining to you, there's two different forms of love. One is the form of love that comes from within yourself and comes from within any human mm. and is aimed usually at another human or another thing. So this... He says that this gift that we have within ourselves, mm -hmm. our natural love, yes. it is a gift from God. It is a gift from God, yes. For us to develop ourselves. Yes, and you have developed it to the degree that you are able to develop it. There he, is no further degree that you can develop this love. And God is grateful for the love that we have developed for ourselves. Correct, because every time you've developed your love into a, <clears throat> into a more perfected degree, you have also benefited all of your brothers and sisters by expressing that love to them. And all of those brothers and sisters are all God's children, so God would naturally be very happy that you've done such a thing. But why would God, if a being such as he exists, mm -hmm. or it exists, mm -hmm. not even really <laughs> sure of whether it has a gender, a gender. <laughs> Why would it take pleasure in knowing this? Well, if God created all children, all of the souls that are human, and then one of those souls that were human demonstrated more love to another soul that was human, 
wouldn't you, as if you were the creator of both of those souls, wouldn't you be overjoyed? Yes, I would be. Hmm. So Let why? me rephrase my question. <laughs> I understand he has not been expressed as yes. I intended to. Sure. I do not have a relationship. And perhaps this is a better way of discussing this. You don't have a relationship. Let's be more specific. I am not aware of this person. And I've, as you have stated, in a way, I've, not, I've chosen not to be aware of this person. Yes. So with all relationships, with all the people I've met, mm. whilst on earth and in the spirit world, mm. there's always been an exchange of some form. Mm -hmm. And I've always offered love to people mm -hmm. throughout my life. And whether, irrespective of whether they love me back or not, mm -hmm. I desire to help them. Mm. Mm. And God would be especially pleased at that. I've lost for words. Mm. That is a rare occurrence for me. <laughs> but in a way, every individual I've engaged with, mm -hmm. spoken with, interacted with, there has been a mutual feeling with that individual. Mm -hmm. And I'm aware of that feeling to a degree. Yes, so there's been an exchange of love. Yes, and I do not feel I am aware of this. So are you saying that I have a relationship in that form or is what relationship would I have or could I have with this person or this entity? Yes, what I'm suggesting is that you can have a relationship that's very similar, but you not need to understand a few basic things in order to have the relationship. And one of those basic things that needs to be understood is that the entity, God, exists as an entity and has love to give you and that you can receive it. The reason why I use the word relationship mm -hmm is that it negates many other questions it does. at once. And it presupposes instantly that there is something personable. That is correct. And God wants to have a, person, personally, a personable, as you call it, relationship with God. So it is not simply an energetic form? No, it's not a, just a flow of energy. As you know, all the expressions of your love to other people on earth or in the spirit world have been a flow of energy towards them, but have also been a flow of an emotion towards them. Yes. And that emotion is the emotion of love. And that's what I've felt, so hence my question. <laughs> yes. And what I'm suggesting is there can be a flow of emotion between yourself and God. And this is the flow of emotion between yourself and God is dependent upon your will. In other words, if you exercise your will to deny the flow of the emotion between yourself and God, then there will be no flow of emotion. But if you exercise your will to engage the flow of feelings between yourself and God, and also be open to receiving God's feelings for you, just as would you, you would be open to receiving another person's feelings for you, now there is a relationship established. So what has God felt from us as we were growing in love and attained this state? Well, what God's felt for you is very different than what God's felt from you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what God's felt for you is that God's been very desirous of you growing in love and growing in your expression of your own love. But, God's, but God hasn't felt, ha has felt you blocking the flow of God's love into you. And I have not felt anything from God during all this all time. All that time. That's correct. Because you have chosen to not feel anything from God. Yes. During the, the this will. Time. You refer to the will. Correct. Hmm. And what I'm suggesting to you and what Ming is going to suggest to you is if, if you actually engage your will differently now and decide to, to actually feel or desire to feel God's love for you, as a desire, a feeling within you, then you will feel and actually observe God's love entering you. And as you do that, it will, not, it will prove to you not only that God exists as an entity, but also that God has love for you. You have been very gentle with me. 
But there are so many things, beliefs, mm -hmm. that this will confront. Yes. Yes. I understand. A lot of beliefs have been confronted. Already. <laughs> but, but this is can I put something, different. Can I put something to you about your beliefs? Yes. There are beliefs that humans create, and I would classify them as ideas or concepts. Mm. Most of them are not true. They're just ideas and concepts. And the origination of our theology? Most of them are ideas and concepts. From? From a spirit or from a person who is a human, so, or from a spirit who used to be a human. And most of them are not from God. So... Can I extend the argument a little further? Yes, and if you could explain what we thought about enlightenment to mean. Oh, yes, we'll, we'll get to that point. Mm. But if you look at what I've just said, you can see firstly that there are ideas and concepts that humans have developed. Now, if you look on Earth, there's literally millions of them, isn't there? Yeah. There's more right. than millions. Yes. And, and if you look at the, theological concepts on Earth, there's quite a few tens of thousands of them. There's much more. Yes. Now, if you look at theological concepts, they are all constructions of the human imagination. Hmm. Which but is a great thing. It is a great thing, but it's not the truth. The truth from... It, it's subject to one's perspective. It's subject to one's perspective, but as you know, and as you've discovered, truth is not subject to perspective. Until it's experienced otherwise. Well, absolute truth, shall we call it that, is never subject to perspective. So, for example, when something is black, it's black. If something Correct. is white, it's white. Hmm. If something is yellow, it's yellow. Uh, somebody can come along and call it green, but it's still yellow. <laughs> yes, but there are many colours that go to create that. Uh, of course. Hmm. But there is a scientific truth to all of the creation of those colours. And I do agree with you there. Yes. Now, what I'm suggesting to you is that most of humankind's concepts and ideas are not scientific truths. No, and hence my reasoning as we commence the conversation. Mm -hmm. All the years I've spent seeking the, the truth, in a way, yes. as to the, the theologies, the... No, see, you haven't been doing that. See, this is what I would like to point out to you. Hmm. What you've been seeking is proof that your theological idea or concept is true. Hmm. And that's different than seeking the truth. Can you see the difference? In a way, yes. You see, when a person seeks the truth, they are seeking what is the absolute scientific God's truth. Whereas my, what I'm doing is I have a subjective opinion. Correct. That you want supported so, yes. by external evidence. And that's not the same as seeking truth. Yes. That is seeking to only observe things that support your opinion. More objective. And, and removing from even your own sight things that would deny the support of your opinion. Mm, that is a difficult part. Mm. And as, I've, you've point, as has been pointed out to you by Ming, you did that from a very early stage. Yes. When you were even in the first sphere, you did that because you could not see the people around you that Ming could see. Because my subjective opinions and beliefs precluded that. Correct. In other words, you wanted the truth to be something different to what it was. So how was Ming so unobjective? <laughs> well, he didn't, he didn't have a predisposition towards a certain thing being true. He was open to the concept that maybe everything that he knew was wrong. And he was open to the concept that maybe God was the person to ask all truth about. But how he, could he have done that at a, such a young age and given well, his because, upbringing? Well, firstly, he had less impediments than you had at the time because of his age. But he grew up in a very violent environment. Correct. But if you ask him about that, what did it cause him to feel? He said he always felt something different. Hmm. 
See, it caused him to not accept the ideas and concepts of humankind. He was aware of other people who were around him mm -hmm. when he was on earth. Yes. People in spirit. In spirit. Mm. Because he passed at a very young age mm -hmm. as a male. Mm. Due to his birth, he was put to death. Mm. Mm. So can you see for him, he had far less impediments to seeing those spirits than you did? Yes. So you had impediments that had been, you could say, inculcated into you by your practices. And I was well versed in my practice at oh. the time I had passed. Of course. And I taught many others yes. the very same thing. But the only problem with these practices is they prevented you from actually seeing the absolute truth, the scientific truth. So what are you asking from me? What I'm suggesting to you is that there's a second thing that is very important. See, the first part of my argument is this. Humankind have developed all sorts of theological concepts and ideas. Hmm. But that's all they are. They're just concepts and ideas. They're not truth from God's perspective. If God exists, and what we're trying to suggest to you through this process is that God does exist, hmm. and God God would therefore know all the absolute truth on every single subject, including the absolute truth of your life. That mm. makes sense, does it not? Yes. Now, if God knows the absolute truth about every single subject, including the absolute truth about your life, then surely the person to communicate with about truth is God. And so what matters now is not what is my idea or concept anymore, but rather what is God's truth on this subject. In other words, you give up the idea that you, through your imagination, can find the truth. And instead what you do is you, you know through communication and relationship with God, that's how you'll discover the truth. That is not such an easy task. I've spent my entire life focused on myself. Mm -hmm. And to but give it, up. But actually it's an easier task than what you've been doing. You see, so. well, you think about the process you've been engaged in. The process you've been engaged in involves coming up with an idea mm -hmm. and then doing a whole series of experiments and practices to determine whether that idea is true or not. Or to receive an idea from another. And yes, do, so do and the do same. the same. And to determine whether that idea is true or not Correct. through experimentation. And you do not always achieve a result. No, no. If you could communicate with God directly and just say to God, is this true or is this not true? And God said in reply to you, yes, that's true and that's not true. And here's all the proof. Surely that would be a much simpler process to engage. It does. It logically sounds quite simple. Mm. So how could it be harder? I just feel... There's much resistance in me mm -hmm. to accept that it's something so simple as that. And what is the cause of the resistance? It goes against everything else that I have done in my life that I feel... Correct. In other words, you have an emotional investment in what you've been doing mm. and, and you desire to keep doing it. Because if you do something different, it means giving up what you've been doing. Yes, and there will be many disappointments. Why? See, it could turn out to be completely different. There might be many, many different enjoyments. Oh, I see. <laughs> Why do you think there might be disappointments when there could be, it could be far easier and, and no disappointment at all? And surely up till now you've had many disappointments. It is interesting that I revert to feeling what I potentially may lose or what I Correct. value. Correct. What I place value in, as opposed to... But surely with Ming standing in front of you, it's, it's also, uh, you should become aware of what you potentially may gain. Yes, and that draws me to a degree, but not to the extent that I... That you imagined. Imagined, yes. Which demonstrates that there must be fears inside of you that need to be released. Fears about relationship with God. Yes, I am very fearful that... What are you afraid of? I 
I do not know anything else other than what I trust within myself. Mm -hmm. So I, relationship with God is going to be you determining to trust somebody outside else. of yourself. Yes. Somebody whom you cannot see. Yes, someone but, who I cannot see. But can feel. I but, did not realise I have so much mistrust. Mm. And there is a fear to it as we speak. Mm -hmm. And what I'm suggesting is to not allow these fears to actually stop you from making a decision to use your will to engage this relationship with God. See, w when we leave this conversation, Ming will explain to you how to engage this relationship with God. And it's very, very simple. It's so simple that you're going to want to try to resist the process. Yeah, I, I, look, I do acknowledge this. I'm, I'm finding this very hard. We all are finding this very hard. Mm -hmm. And we can see that we're attributing this as a choice for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But yet it is a feeling, though. Ming does not has not had this difficulty placed upon him. Has this provided him with an advantage to a degree? Well, when he was passed from the earth, he hadn't. Oh. When he passed from the earth, he hadn't had a very strongly formulated concept yes. that God didn't exist as an entity. But he also said some of our friends who have been teaching have had the same difficulties we have had. Yes. Yes. So, hmm, okay. Many things are being stated to us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they've used this word faith. Mm -hmm. Well, may, may I point out faith in one particular aspect and yes. area? You see, if the entity God exists, and if Ming has the amount of love that he has within his soul, and he's saying that that love came from that entity, mm -hmm then it would make sense that that entity, God, must have huge amounts of love to give. And shall we say, potentially an infinite amount of love to give. This is exciting. Yes. Mm. Now, if that, if that creator has an infinite amount of love to give, then surely that means that creator is good. Yes. Love and would only be good. Love can only be good, is, mm. is, isn't that true? Because mm. love, by its own definition, is good. Mm. Now, if that is the case, surely he can be trusted. Mm. But my level of love it is, does not have this expression. Mm -hmm. But yes, I do agree with you that love would provide trust. So why would you then not have faith that if this God exists, that it will be loving? It's a very interesting question. See, because I've not considered it in that fashion. You see, one of the reasons why there were belief systems on earth created that talk about there not being an entity of God is because many people on earth were very upset with the concept of, the, of God. And the main reason why they were upset with the concept of God was because they believed God to be a punishing and autocratic God. Mm. It's a different measure. Yeah. Now, I'm suggesting to you that such a God does not exist. So there's no such thing as a punishing and autocratic God. You've never met a punishing God in your entire existence. No, I have not. And you've been around for 2,300 years. Mm. So therefore, it's highly unlikely that there is a God who is punishing and autocratic. But also, many people have passed who, who have been very loving. Correct. And in particular, in our, at the time I had lived on earth. Yes. People who were, who had high morals and high, a degree of love. Yes. Were punished for that sole reason. They were punished, but they weren't punished by God. No, they were not. They might have been punished in the name of God, which is a very different concept. But we... Ah, even I believe that I would have been saved to a degree. And that somehow this measure of love I had 
would place me in a better state. Mm -hmm. Why would have protected me? Well, it does to a degree, but as you know, the earth state is in a very, very, very bad state in terms of very disconnected from love. Mm. And that whenever truth and love meet untruth and fear, fear and untruth fights for itself. It dominates, yes. Well, it doesn't have to dominate, but it does fight for itself. And as a result on the earth, what we see is that fear and hate and, and you know, untruth dominate on earth. But don't assume that that means that that is what God wanted or what God expected. You see, what happens on earth is that we, there are many things that happen on earth that we then make the presumption or the assumption that God wants them to occur. And there are many people who have attributed different gods within that act. Of course they have, yeah. So the Christians have their God and, you know, the Muslims have their God and the Buddhists, some of them have a God and some of them feel they are God. And yes. And then the New Age people that are now on earth all believe they are a part of God. And, and then some people believe God is in nature and some people believe, well, there's so many different beliefs about God that we could go on for the entire day probably and still not list them all. But what, what was within the, these other individuals that allowed them to have this direct concept, because, this because, direct path? That well, they is, saw God as an entity for a start. They didn't see themselves as being a part of God. They saw themselves as being a separate creation of God. But what was their feeling? So that, that thought was a feeling. Mm. And then they, they, they then, because there was an entity of God in their own mind, they believed that they could have some kind of relationship with this God. Okay. And hence began the attempt to have the relationship. Even though he was unknown to them. Even though he was unknown to them. Hmm. Okay, this is becoming a lot more easier. Does that make sense? Hmm. And if you think of what Ming has learned in his life on, in the spirit world, he's, his life now is demonstrating that he knows there is a God that is an entity. He knows that God's qualities and nature and that God has shared with him many truths through the relationship. Mm. So what he speaks of and what he demonstrates is God's love. Correct. And Ming's received God's love to the point of becoming born again. And what that means is that he's turned into being a new type of creature. Instead of a creature being limited to the perfect natural man, he is now a creature that has the capacity of infinite expansion. And why was this bestowed upon him alone because he chose to receive God's love simply through choosing yes. to receive the love yes. he has been reborn yes and also he has become immortal through that same choice through that same choice so all all of the drawbacks that you see in doing such a thing hmm. I don't see no and all I see is a lot of advantages I'm, I do not get me wrong. I do see, and I am feeling certain attractions to certainly. Yeah, but you, so far you've listed many drawbacks. Yes, and, <laughs> and, and, and I have asked you as well. Why. <laughs> and I'm suggesting there are none. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you are saying there is nothing. There's again, again, I am reverting back <laughs> to other feelings, to other fears. Yes. <clears throat> Hmm. So, so now there are many questions that you could ask, of course, about all of this, right? Yes. But, but the problem with asking questions now without performing an experiment is that all you'd be doing is philosophizing. Yes. And you've got an example of a man, Ming, who is standing in front of you, who has received this love, who has claimed to receive the love, who claims to know how to do it, he is obviously in a more loving state than you yourself are. So surely he would, it would be wise now to allow him to show you. 
Mm. What would need to be done in order to receive this love? And to then engage that experiment. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. He reassures us the love will not hurt. Yes. And what I feel at this point in our conversation is that, is that it's probably best if you engage those experiments that Ming will suggest to you. Mm. And then if you still have further questions, that you come back again and we answer those questions. Would you like me to do this now? Well, what to say, we can, we, I know that you can ask, you have many things happen in 10 minutes of our time here on earth. Yes. So what if we just have a short break? Yes. Here on earth and uh, we'll let you go and do those particular things. We would like to do so. Yep. As you're aware, there are a few other people who have arrived. Yes. And they are all familiar to us. Yes. Mm, so I'm grateful that they're here. Yes. So what we'd like to do is encourage you to engage the experiments, even though there might be some fears that come up. And yes. my suggestion is to allow yourself to feel your fears, but do not act upon them. In other words, don't stop engaging the experiment. Yes. And then uh, we'll, go, we'll just have a short break for five minutes or so, mm. and we'll come back and we'll, we will, if there's any more questions you would like to ask, then I'd be happy to answer them. I would like to do this. We yes. all would. Mm. And we're grateful because, mm. as you said, it is difficult. <laughs> yes. mm. So let's engage the experiment. Okay. Because the experiment will tell you many things that philosophizing will not. <laughs> yes, they say we can do things in a much more rapid way. Correct. Mm. Thank you. We, we will be back. No worries. So many people are there. A few. The guys are around it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, I've been trying to tee up with, I suppose you would call them the leaders of the Buddhist movement in the spirit world. Buddha himself is very, very difficult to communicate with. Buddha's almost lost himself. <coughs> but I think one of the things that Ming can do is take them to go and see Buddha. And that would be an interesting exercise in itself for them. Mm. <coughs> Yeah. Do you, do you sort of recall when you had met them? Yeah, it's probably close to four or five years ago now. Um, and I've been praying for an opportunity to speak with Buddhists in the spirit world in the sixth sphere for some time, for probably the last five years. Mm. I remember this morning <coughs> uh, when I was listening to um, Philip, mm -hmm. and she was talking about Taoism. Mm -hmm. That really sparked their interest, mm. and um, yeah, they were, they were intrigued about the soul and what you were discussing. Mm. They'll have many questions, but Ming will be able to answer them a lot more rapidly than they would need to. There's a few questions they will probably need to, I'll need to address because of their um, disconnection from their emotional state. So mm. we'll try and address some of those questions, and then yeah, the rest. Ming and be able to answer fine. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Well, the, the thing is, he'll he'll automatically start to see a different understanding of the soul once he goes through this coat process, anyway. So. Mm. Mm. I feel he's coming back. Mm. Okay. <coughs> Hello again. How are you, Ming? Yeah. It's an interesting question. <laughs> Such a simple question. How are you? <laughs> yes. Mm. Has, mm. has much meaning. Mm. Do you notice that you've received some God's love now? Yes. I'm, I'm finding it very hard to talk to you. Yes, because it's a very emotional process. It struck me quite hard. Yes. Not in the sense of a strike. Yeah. But more just overwhelming, isn't it? It is extremely overwhelming. And you've, you've not been, shall we say, allowing of overwhelming emotions very frequently. No. No. And this is where it's difficult. 
What I would like to do, though, is to remind you that a person can't die from being overwhelmed by emotion. <laughs> well, I do not understand why I was so fearful that something like that could occur. Mm. A lot of our fears actually come from our earth life. And we don't realize, but we keep them inside of ourselves for all of our existence. And we try to suppress them. We try to control them and we try to resist them. And you've been using quite a strong effort to do each of those things. I've used all my might. Yes. But in the end, the feelings are still within the soul and it, they still need to be expressed. It is very remarkable to even have this realization that the feelings that are arising are all the things that I had felt whilst on, I was on earth. Yes. And they've been denied all this time. Yes. And you'd almost thought that they would disappeared, right? Yes. And in, in reality, in, in you way, had just, thought that they'd disappeared, but they were still there. In a way, I had felt that they had, I had thought. <laughs> exactly, because you certainly didn't feel it. <laughs> no, it is, it is interesting, the choice of word I, words yes. I'm making at this point. <clears throat> mm. Yes, I had thought they had dissolved in yes. some way yes. that I had, I had truly that understood. That some practice had removed them. Yes. Yes. Mm. And that I did not have to return to earth to do so. Mm. Mm. But you're going to learn some things very rapidly now, things about the soul, which you questions that you asked at the beginning. And, and I'm going to leave Ming to answer many of those questions for you. But, but the, the soul, the human soul, is a very comp complex creation of God. But it has some very basic features that is very wise for you to understand. And one of those features is that if you suppress or resist the flow of emotion in the soul, while you can use your will and your mind to do so, it is very counterproductive to the development of your soul. I am very intrigued about mm. this soul. Mm. And I have listened to some of your words earlier today, not from you directly, <coughs> but through your discussions with another. And you stated some very direct aspect of the soul mm -hmm. that intrigued me and I did not understand. And in a way, I still do not understand. Mm. What I suggest you will do, though, is if you can develop this relationship with God further and allow yourself to be overwhelmed through this emotional process that you're going to go through, what will happen is the truths about the soul will start to come to you as well. You said the soul is feelings. The feelings come from my soul. Yes. So in a way, you... <coughs> You have separated, you have delineated between thoughts versus feelings. Correct. And you have... Hmm. You could say that the thoughts of the soul are feelings. <laughs> yes, and that is, that is very hard to understand. Mm. That the thoughts of the mind are thoughts. Yes, as I was crying, mm -hmm. when I had received this love, mm -hmm. and I know I have received it, and I know it comes externally from mm -hmm. me. So you know God exists now as well. I do know God exists. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how, I do not know how to express in words the gratitude <laughs> towards this person now. Mm -hmm. And God can feel that. Yes, All you do is allow yourself to feel the feelings you feel with God. There is an instant reciprocative feeling that comes to you, which overwhelms, <laughs> which overwhelms you again. More. <laughs> Correct. And that is an extremely limited expression <clears throat> in words of what transpires. Yes, yes. But I understand that there is a slight understanding occurring for me, mm -hmm. that there is a feeling behind each thought. Yes. And the first set of feelings that arise is fear and, and sadness. There is this sadness. Yeah. And there is a lot of emptiness. Feelings of emptiness and disappointment. Mm. And I feel that the overwhelmment of this love that arrived, I reached this point of great discontent and disappointment. Mm. And they're the things that I need to feel. Yes. 
And what I'm suggesting, going to suggest to you is that you do not turn off your feelings. You have become adept at doing this yes, through your practices. And I do not like this fact that I need to feel disappointed and angry. Mm -hmm. But they are encouraging us all. Yes. That this is part of the process. Correct. And that there is joy and for us to focus on the joy that is available. Yes. Of what we've currently felt that much more, the extent of it, will be much greater. Yes. And much more is available to you. Yes. And you see, once you've gone through this initial phase, which is the most traumatic phase, and the reason why it's the most traumatic is because every new bit of love that enters you confronts untruth that exists within you. And whenever untruth exists within the soul, it's always painful to release it. In a way, this is worse than for what had occurred for Ming. Yes, because for him, he was young for a start. He already had a concept of God that, you know, he thought of God as an entity. Mm. He already believed that there was a possibility or potential of having a relationship. And he didn't have any very firmly established views or beliefs about God not existing and about practices and so forth. And so, yes, it is going to be a, a fairly difficult process initially, mm. but you need to understand that it's only an initial difficult process. It will get easier as time goes on because you will release more and more of the untruthful feelings that governed your previous choices. And as a result, you will only feel more love and more joy with regard to truth that comes to you. So why is it, so this, these feelings <clears throat> that enter us, mm -hmm. that, that become to my attention. They, they make me feel and think about other things. Mm -hmm. Things that you've been closed to feeling before. Yes, and mm -hmm. I feel my will is drawn in, in a different way. Yes, because what God's do God does is it, God's expanding your soul. See, every little bit of God's love that enters your soul expands it beyond its original natural man and expands it into becoming or transform. It's, it's a transformative process. If you, you know the transformative process of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly mm. and you know the metamorphosis that needs to occur, which is almost a complete mixture, mixing up of all of the elements back into a liquid, liquefied form inside of the cocoon before the butterfly can appear, right? So it's a complete reconstruction, if you like, of the, of the human soul that you're start now engaging. That requires every bit of error that exists in the human soul to be released. And in the process of error being released, there is always some physical pain associated with the release of error. And there will, there will always be emotional pain associated with the release of error. But there is, they say that there is emotional pain for the actions I've taken throughout my life in the spirit world. Correct. Because, it, because the, you could think of it as the one thing that you have done that has, has um, well, I suppose you could say there's a whole group of things you have done which have caused you to make one primary decision which has not been to your benefit. This primary decision that you made was that there is no God that exists as an entity and that I cannot have a relationship with any God if God does not exist. Now that one choice that you made has caused a lot of pain for you. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. but. It is difficult to accept <laughs> yes. until you experience it for yourself. Yes. And that's why I called it the, the, the sin against the Holy Spirit is the greatest sin. Hmm. And it, you call it a sin? Well, it's a sin in the sense that if you look at the term sin, uh, its original meaning was missing the mark of perfection. See, I attribute sin to punishment. Yes, I don't attribute sin to punishment. I see sin as missing the mark of perfection. So God is not punishing me. No. In my choice. No, but, but whenever you make a choice that misses the mark of perfection, there will be pain associated with the choice. And why is this so? 
Well, it's so that you have a feedback system telling you that it's not the mark of perfection. And yet at the same time, God has created a, an avenue for us to completely deny these feelings. Correct. Which I have chosen to do. Correct. But you can only choose it through the exercise of your will. Yes, I have done Nobody that. Nobody else can will. choose it for you. And this is confusing. <laughs> Feelings of confusion arise <laughs> that, that this is an aspect of love. Yes, because if you think about it, God, what God did was God created all human souls and then God said to all of those human souls, I will allow you to do anything that you wish, but every time you take an action that is out of harmony with love, you will feel the consequence of such action upon yourself mm. because it's out of harmony with love. But in a way, <laughs> there is this excitement and you can feel that. Well, of course, me, of course. That I did not, I would never have attained this as an experience as a quality of love. That's correct. <sighs> because it's not yours. It's not mine. But what is mine now is I've gone to the nth degree <laughs> yes. and I have so experimented to the point where... Where you reach the pinnacle of your own progression. Yes, and that now it is loving that I've reached that point. Yes. And that love is demonstrating to me yes. that there is another choice. Yes. And that it's so, so while you have reached the pinnacle of your own progression through your own effort, mm. this next phase of your development will need a relationship in order to be to 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 continue to progress mm. and this relationship is the relationship that you establish with god so god does create different mechanisms for us all yes and it's loving in all all aspects yes so because the pain it, i'm feeling is an aspect of love well it's an aspect of the correction of your soul mm. It's an area where there are things inside of you at the moment emotionally. There are things inside of you that are out of harmony with love and always have been out of harmony with love. Mm. And they're out of harmony with God's love in particular. Mm. Does that make sense? So every time you receive God's love, you will feel some pain until those things that are out of harmony with God's love that exist inside of your soul are released. Okay. I, do not get me wrong. I do find this very difficult mm -hmm. and it does not seem like it is a simple process. <laughs> and I well, do not wish others to be falsified in what is occurring. Yes, it, it, like I, it's an emotional process and requires the allowance of overwhelming emotions. Mm. And for most people, that is a very difficult task. But it is simple even though it might be difficult. Does that yes, make sense? It is simple in its very form. And it's simple in its understanding. Yeah. And to pray in this way. Yes. But it is, the difficulty arises <laughs> when the overwhelmment or uh, Correct. <laughs> it, it's the allowance of the overwhelming emotions, which is the secret. Yes. And, and that is what most people find very difficult because they have spent many, many years resisting and denying and suppressing these emotions. And I find that occurred for me instantaneously. Mm -hmm. So the extent of the love that I could receive, even though I was rejoicing in that, yep. was limited by? It was limited, extremely limited by this other overwhelming feeling that arose. Well, no, it's limited by how much you allow the overwhelming feeling. Okay, now that is different. Mm. I attributed it to to the feeling that, that arose. No, it's, a, it's about how much you can allow that feeling. Okay. You see, the feeling will arise because anything that's inside of you that is out of harmony with the reception of God's love will be exposed. And so you will need to feel it. Yeah. There's much joy <laughs> as we talk about this. Yes. And I, I, there's much love that comes to us from me and from the others mm. th th about every single thing we're talking about. Yes. And that gives me so much warmth. Yes. So this... This allowance that occurs at that point in time, mm -hmm. what, what is truly occurring that does not allow me to? Well, every time you have a belief system or a fear, shall we call it, that's associated with the 
the internal beliefs surrounding the overwhelming emotional experience. So in other words, because you've spent much of your life attempting to suppress overwhelming emotional experiences, mm -hmm. you, are now, you have now limited your soul in its ability to experience emotion. Yes, we have meditated our way you, out of things. You've purposefully done this, I and understand. Have, <laughs> yes, and you have not talked about our process, how we do this. Yes, and, and what I'm suggesting is the techniques that you've used have, have closed down certain capacity within your soul to experience overwhelming emotion. And those capacities that exist as potentials within your soul need to be reopened. And God's love is going to do that for you if you allow the overwhelming experience. Okay. It's, oh, well, that's, that's, that is a revelation. Mm. I do not need to do anything in my soul other than allow. Correct. That makes you it much more simpler. You don't have to do any practice or any specific, there's no specific rules. You just need to learn how to allow the flow of this emotion. That is much simpler to what I've done all my life. Yes. And you see, the majority of people don't want to allow the flow of the emotion, whether they're on earth or in the spirit world. Mm. And as a result, they limit how much of God's love they can receive. Okay. Because each time God's love is received, it will expose the error that exists within the soul. And that error must come out as emotion. But once you learn this, yes. it becomes easier. Yes. So this is something that you will need to go through, like an experience. Mm. An experience of allowing yourself to see, up till now, you've been using your techniques to shut down the emotional experience. And now you're going to need to, to, to open up the emotional experience, to allow the emotional experience to occur without limitation. Mm. But they are funny, are they not? <laughs> <laughs> mm. These wonderful people who are here with us, mm -hmm. they have an answer for everything. <laughs> of course. <laughs> through demonstration. But God does too, doesn't God? Yes. They say this is all directly what they have learned from God. <laughs> exactly. So they endear, they, it is, a, is it? Oh, I'm brought to tears. Yeah, it's good to have good friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's also good to have good friends who already have done what you need to do because then they can help you do it. Yes, but they've done this with God. They have. And they want to show you how to do it with God. Yeah. They talk about their desire is in line with the God's desire. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, God has a much stronger desire than they do for you to go through this experience. It is interesting how questions get answered. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And this is a beautiful thing about this kind of experience is that many questions get answered very, very rapidly. Yes, I know. Without you needing to go searching. And, and you know their truth because they're coming with God's love. So every time the answers come with God's love, you know that they're truth. And you can try, you can experiment with them if you want, but in the end, you won't even need to. You just go ahead and do them and you'll know them to be true then. And this is one of the experiments they've asked us to do mm -hmm. whilst we have been away from you. Yeah. And we have done that. We, instead of asking you the question, We've simply asked God the question. Ask God the question, <laughs> and He got answered instantaneously. Correct, and and that was why they are doing what they are doing with us. Yes, mm. so it's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, this is. So now you don't have to go through experiment after experiment after experiment to find the answer to any question. I still like experiments, <laughs> of course. <laughs> we all do. I feel this is an intrinsic <clears throat> part of me. But my experiments will be different now. Of course. Mm. So most of my experiments involve God. Okay. You always involve God in everything. Mm. To me, that's the first experiment. <laughs> it makes sense logically too, because if there is a creator who knows everything, then surely the best experiment to engage is whether you can connect to that creator who knows everything. Mm, but your logic is not tainted by 
other ill feelings. Correct. It's not tainted by anger towards God or belief systems that are on the earth about God or mm. or mum and dad, you know, their emotions towards God or towards each other or towards me as a child. Mm. Yeah, mm. I, can, I can feel this gentleness, mm. the love that you have for me, mm. for us all. Mm. You had this for us when you met us. <laughs> <laughs> and I just did we there's no way we could have understood any of this. Because you couldn't feel it right. Yes. Because you weren't allowing any emotionally overwhelming experience. And that's the reason why we've had to have this logical conversation to to help you engage the process of having an emotional experience. But you've had this desire for a very long time. Mm. And it's been God's desire as well. Of course. That's why I've had it, because I can feel that God has it too. Yeah, I understand. God wants every one of his children to have a relationship with him. How can God love and have a relationship with everyone at once? Well, I don't know. I, I think that's fairly logical that it's possible for one person to have a relationship with many people. And if, if we're just limited people and we can have a relationship with many people at once, Mm -hmm. then surely God, who's an unlimited being, has the potential to have an unlimited amount of relationships with every one of God's creations. There are many things about love and God mm. that now come to my mind. <clears throat> well, you know that you have a far greater capacity as a six-sphere spirit than a, than a first-sphere spirit has. Yes. You know that you can hold on, you can actually have conversations where the, all the people involved think they're conversing with you real time, but you're just time slicing all yes. the conversations. You know that. Mm. And I don't even need to be there. You don't even need to be there and still have the conversations. Mm. Hence why I've stayed it. I've been in my home for a very long time. Of course. Now, surely God has far greater capacities than you do to have multiple relationships. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There is so much wisdom yeah. in, in each statement, but I can feel that there are, there are things that you've experienced that I do not know of. Mm. And the investigations will not stop. No. Mm. And, I, will... and I've had to continue to investigate things, but what I've found is that I've, my investigations first have to be driven by my desires and my desire to know more and to understand more of God's universe and particularly understand more about God has driven all of my investigations. Yeah, okay. So that is your driving force. Yes. And then in the process of discovering more about God and God's universe and God's laws, I've discovered more about myself and more about the universe I live in and, and more about how to be happy. So this is really unique. Everything that everyone learns, these people I've met now, mm -hmm. have learned through God. Mm -hmm. So all the learnings we have learned all our lives have not truly been attributed to us in a real sense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God's been trying to teach all of God's children everything that God knows. Mm -hmm. But, but it, it's taken a few people on earth to discover how God does that. So all I do is teach people how. Like, I don't need to teach them what, because God does that. Yes, I understand. I need to teach them how they can connect to God so that God can teach them things. Mm. You are a simple messenger. Mm. And God showed me how. And everyone else needs to learn this for themselves. Yes. This is a problem that exists on earth. Yes. In, and also where we live and in, in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. One needs to... So th <laughs> Experiment one for oneself. Yes. Mm. But they need to know, firstly, how to have the relationship with God. And, that, and that's the thing I feel that, mo that that knowledge of that, you know, ceased many, many tens of thousands of years ago. Mm. And it wasn't until 2,000 years ago that it was discovered again, you know. And I have added to this. Yes, well, if you think about it, almost every practice in every religious faith on earth is about the denial of the soul, the denial of the true feelings. So it's not just your religious faith, but every religious faith on earth generally attempts to deny the this, emotions of the soul. This needs to be overturned. Mm. I need to, yes. I need to help my 
fellow brothers and sisters to learn. Yes. So this is where it's, a, it's very good if you can learn yourself how to allow the overwhelming emotional experience. And once you've allowed the emotional experience to be overwhelmed, you and go through the process and you release many of the false beliefs that are inside of your soul as emotions, mm. they all get released, then you'll be open to receiving the truth. There are many, I have not done <laughs> much of this, mm -hmm. but what I have received is, is remarkable. Mm. And it is overwhelming in its own right. Yes. Well, every time God gives you love, obviously God, love coming from an infinite being is always going to be overwhelming no matter what condition you're in. Yes. So if you ask Ming whether he gets overwhelmingly <laughs> emotional once he receives love from God, even in the 13th yeah, sphere. He, he showed it to us <laughs> and, 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 and he cried. He, he cried with so much joy. Mm. He's able to talk with me. Yeah. But you see, he didn't have the pain associated with it that you do because he has released that pain. Does that make sense? But it's just love. Yes. Such a young man. <laughs> so influential. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What would happen if I do this? Will I miss the opportunity to speak to the others? I have a fear that if I do this... No, you, you'll always have opportunity to speak to other people. Whether they desire to listen to you now that your ideas and concepts have changed is another matter. So that will depend on how they use their will. You see, you see sometimes when we change, people around us think we've become strange. And as a result, they don't listen to us anymore because they have the same problem we had when we were listening to somebody else who had changed. And we can't, we can't fix that. That's something that they need to address themselves. So there's nothing you can do that is going to help them to listen to you. Does that make sense? Yes. They, they, they are going to exercise their will one way or the other. And that, that is something and that they need to do for themselves. Of course, that is a God-given right mm. to exercise their will how they see fit. However, it does not stop me from, if I feel something, an opportunity to talk to them. Correct. Mm. Yes. And but only if it's their will. Only if it's their will. So if, if they were exercising their will to not listen to you or to deny listening to you or not, they don't want to listen to you, then of course it's very difficult to share with anybody truth under those circumstances. So how, how will I truly know that they, their will is exercised in this direction? You will feel it from them. I will feel it, not as simply a, the words. As a feeling. Yeah, it won't be just the words. In fact, sometimes people say words and they don't have the feeling. So there are many people on earth who come to me and say, oh, I'd really like to know this. And the feeling I have from them is that they don't want to know anything at all. Mm. Yes, I, I understand. Yeah. So you need to be sensitive to their feelings. The more I grow myself, I'll be able to do of so. Of course, the more you allow yourself to be emotionally overwhelmed in this process with God, the more sensitive you will come, become to your own feelings. And as a result, you will then be able to sensitively feel what another person is feeling, even though they might be using different words. Mm. Mm. There is a consequence for all this. And I do not understand why God... There are many things. I, I have so many questions. <laughs> I well, could talk to you for... When you think about it, for 2,300 years, you've not conceived of the concept of God. Now that you're conceiving of the concept of God, of course, there's going to be many, many thousands of questions about God. Yes. And, uh, and that's a part of the process, of course. Yes. Yeah. Discovering the answers to those questions. Wouldn't it be wonderful? for theology to disappear. <laughs> of course it would be wonderful. <laughs> but see, remember what I said about theology. It's really the creation of men's concepts and ideas about God. Mm. It's not God's truth about God. Yes. And what, what God wants to do is present the truth about God. But unfortunately, humankind has become so arrogant that we, we are more interested in dreaming up through our imagination concepts about God then we are listening to God's truth about God. Mm. Mm. And I find that's a little sad, but, but you see the results of that on earth. You see there's many, many tens of thousands of religions. They're all working in different directions. There's many wars and there's a lot of strife and 
all of these things are the results of humankind developing their own concepts about God and, their, and therefore their own concepts about truth. Mm. It, it is true. And it's been difficult to observe what has transpired on earth mm. over all that time. Mm. Hence the reason for staying home. <laughs> you would not want to venture into that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, mm. I mean, there are questions about sure. your choice. and Of yeah. course. So, you, you know, we haven't yet answered the questions about reincarnation that you've asked. Yes. And we have not yet asked the question, you know, really discussed uh, much of the detail about what it means to be born again. Yes. But my suggestion is to go through the process of being born again and then you'll know what it feels like mm. and then you'll be able to explain it much better to other people who you assist. Yes. Mm. And irrespective of its time, I, I am very warmed by the concept of this being an infinity yeah. type of process. Yeah. Mm. So it's not going to, you know how for the last two or three hundred years you've been feeling quite stagnant. Yeah, and I feel joy now. <laughs> now. Now you've got, you, you can see that it's opened up a whole path of development mm. that means that you won't be stagnant for, and if you continue to embrace it, of course, using your will, you will never be stagnant again. Mm. And I would love to share this with others so mm. they never achieve this state of stagnancy. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And as you know, there are many people who are passing from Earth now yes. who believe in the Buddhist concepts of reincarnation and so forth. And it's grown. And it's grown quite considerably, partic mm. particularly now with the onset of the New Age philosophies. Mm. And uh, there's a lot of correction that needs to occur on Earth to prevent some very damaging things occurring with spirit overcloaking and things like that that is happening here on earth at the moment and um and it would be wonderful if if there were many many more spirit teachers who could help mm. all of the people who are in their sleep state you know believing these particular things to be true that are not true and uh, and that we can demonstrate a diff the, the real truth god's truth to them we would all love to do this. Yeah. And we feel this within our heart. Mm. It is the first time we are feeling drawn to go back to Earth. <laughs> yeah. How about that? How about that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. I have not laughed for a very long time <laughs> in this way. Yes, well, that's a, see, that's another, that's another byproduct of trying to close down the soul, using suppression techniques to close down the soul. Mm using the processes that you've been using and the practices you've been using have closed down parts of the soul but but unfortunately it also suppresses other parts of the soul mm -hmm. which you can get a lot of enjoyment from so you know that's an unfortunate byproduct of the practices that you've been using mm. i feel there will there'll be times where i i'm not so interested to learn that much about the soul itself to see it as opposed to helping others but I'm interested in learning more about how to deal with this overwhelmment mm. when I receive the love. But once you under, see, the way I see it is if you understand as much as you possibly can about the soul, how it works, how God structured it, how God created it, what God created it to be, mm. then you have the capacity to help people because they are all God's souls that okay. God created, right? Yes. So they're all, they're all children of God, they're all souls. And if you understand how God created the soul to function, then that will greatly assist every one of those people who that you try to assist. Even if I have not seen a soul? Even if, if you have not seen a soul, but there will come a time when with your soul perceptions, you will see souls. Mm. And, and there will become a time when you actually see souls um, in your future development. So, so any person who enters the soul union condition, which is in the 36th dimension, so that's so it's quite a nice 30 30 spheres above where you currently are and mm. um, has been able to see souls and uh, and that's a very very unique experience but in and and but also a very beautiful experience because it explains to you how the soul functions and once you understand how the soul functions you understand a lot of things about why god created things the way god did with regards to the human soul Mm. Mm. There are many, <laughs> there are so many more questions I have now mm, than I, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I told you there would be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you know, and there's always, and you need to remember there's answers to all of these questions. Yes. 
So that's very, very important to remember. Yes, the answers do come. Mm. And, and that is important for everyone to understand. Mm -hmm. The receipt of the love does provide you with an answer. Correct. Mm. Yeah. And that is unique. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so grateful for all the years you <laughs> persisted with us. No worries. Mm. Um, I think it's appropriate that you have a new name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I soon you will feel born again. <laughs> yes, I, I feel I will change my name. Mm. The name I have called myself represents the sun. Nice. I felt that I had the answers for many. Yes, and people, in a way, worshipped me and mm -hmm. expected me to teach them. Mm -hmm. And I had created that for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel there are many things coming that I'm yet. <laughs> have not felt yes, <laughs> about so. this very thing. <laughs> yes, there will be many things that you feel about that. But also that will afford you many opportunities as well. Mm. Every time we are engaged in teaching things that we, we find ourselves to not longer be true mm. or to not be true, we have the ability to correct those things. And if you have many people who have listened to you, then you have many people potentially who are able to listen to you about the correction. Mm. Yes, I do feel that that is a possibility mm. for the very students I was teaching. I am learning from right now. Exactly. So that is a unique truth <laughs> that I yes. I do share with you. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And it would be nice for mistruth to be denied mm. in a real way, mm. Mm. to be undone. To be undone. And they say that is what you are attempting to do. That's what I'm attempting to well. do. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So I will support you in whatever, however I can. Thank you. <laughs> we mm. need lots of support in that process. Yep. Yes. There are many things that we have not spoken of. Changes that are occurring in, in all the spheres yes. that we live in and that I have visited in, in, a, in another way. Yes. You'll even start to understand why those changes are occurring. Yes, and there have <coughs> been changes and the changes are in certain spheres, the changes are much greater than, than the, the spheres where we lie within. Yes. Mm. And I have seen, there have been people, certain groups that have left mm. this dimension, mm -hmm. and that has been quite remarkable. Because mm -hmm. that's very unusual. Very unusual. For many thousands of years, that was not the case. They are much older than us. Mm -hmm. Indeed, though, they were, this particular group I had known, I had not spent much time with them, but they had showed me things whilst I was in the earlier, in the first sphere. Mm -hmm. And as you rightfully stated, it did not suit my vocation. And, but I wanted to learn what they had learned about the spirit world mm -hmm. and how we could implement these things within, within the laws that they had learned. Yeah. Mm. But they have gone. Yeah. And I saw, and they had gone in all in all directions. <laughs> they visited the earlier spheres. Yes. And some have disappeared in, yes. in, in their entirety. Yeah. Hmm. So And now you're starting to understand why. I, I understand why. Yes. And one of these individuals has reappeared to us mm -hmm. during this intermission. Mm -hmm. And that was I really rejoiced meeting her again. Yes. Hmm. And there's a special reason why you'll rejoice meeting her again. Yes, so there's so many things that if people only learned mm. about life in the spirit world, how important it is yes. for their progression on earth, yeah. that I'd like to teach people. Yes. Mm. The importance of this. Yes. Mm. I've got many things I'd like to ask, but I've also got many things I'd like to feel. Well, uh, my feeling at this point is that the best thing to do now is to probably listen to Ming and other teachers that mm. will teach you different things. And there are things that you might like to come back and talk about to, that will have a particular connection with your earth-based earth life that they may find difficult or you might find difficult to connect to through discussion with them. Mm. And I'd definitely welcome another discussion with you. I welcome this as well. Yeah. We all do. And we've been stayed, it's been told to us that you will visit us. In, in another form. Yes, yes. So I look forward to that. Yes, when you're in the dimension where we exist, is it, you are able to create many forms and, yes. and communicate with many different people in many different spheres. Mm. 
So those particular things can always happen anyway. Yes, I look forward to all these things. The beauty of coming back to Earth at times to discuss things with us here on Earth is that it will help you connect to your Earth life, which is where most of these false beliefs and emotions and the techniques of emotional suppression came from. And so in that regard, it may assist you with your progress to actually visit, the, visit us here on Earth and have a discussion rather than having a discussion in the spirit world about the same thing. Is that why there are so many who are visiting Earth attempting to guide others? Yes, that's correct. Mm. That's one of the reasons, you know. Mm. Yeah. And I did not realise that there were so many people here doing that. Yes, yeah. It is immense. Mm. Mm. Yes. It is truly remarkable <laughs> <laughs> to see other things occur. Yes, a lot goes on, doesn't it? Sometimes we live in our own cocoons, and uh, <laughs> so our home becomes our cocoon. Yes, the caterpillar was quite <laughs> well And the butterfly gets to experience a lot of other things. Mm. I did not realise all the activity that was occurring, not only in my home, mm. but also in all the other homes. Yes, mm. yeah. Mm. And there's good reasons for these things. God has an intention to bring all of God's children to got you know to mm. to this relationship and and that intention is intensifying well god's intention i suppose this would be more accurate is god's intentions always been intense but but there's a lot more people who can assist that attention now mm. i can and see so. the importance also of others on earth to mm. assist in this process as of well of course yeah mm. and that's something we're trying to achieve yes and i will assist in that yeah thank you because mm. yeah. i feel it is very important for others to to learn of existence of others such as ourselves. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But I agree. Not forgetting God. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. In, <the> equation. <laughs> in fact the essential part, the essential ingredient. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to all and all our brothers and, and sisters. Would well, there there have been sisters here as well? Yes, yes. Yes. And you yeah. you know that they are there. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yes. They're all crying in their own right, so I wish to join them. <laughs> yeah, no worries. There's a lot to feel, and my yes, suggestion yes. is to let yourself feel those things. And you'll have many of your questions answered through that process, and then some of the questions you might need further help here on Earth again. So mm. we'd be happy to have you back and have another chat about those particular things. Yes, mm. no worries. Thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mm.